During World War I, the bayonet issued to British soldiers was the P-1907. Now this bayonet was found to be unwieldy and just cumbersome in general in the trench conditions of the First World War. Now after the war was over, they decided that they wanted something shorter, uh, lighter, and just easier to carry around in general. And they also wanted to figure out what the minimum length was for disabling an enemy soldier. And this length was found to be eight inches. And after some more tests and prototyping, they came up with this, the number four bayonet. Now this bayonet here is a number four Mark II. The first design they adopted was the number four Mark I. And before we take a uh, closer look at these, one interesting detail is that this is a socket bayonet. Now at this point in history, most other countries, with the exception of Russia, had adopted blade type bayonets that used just a single lug under the barrel that the bayonet slid onto. Whereas in this bayonet, the entire socket fits over the barrel. So they were sort of backtracking in terms of bayonet technology at this point, but nevertheless, it was a good bayonet. It got the job done just fine and it was cheap and easy to produce. So let's take a closer look at this bayonet and I'll show you some uh, finer details of it. First bayonet we're gonna take a look at is the number four Mark I. And right away you can see that the most distinguishing characteristic of this bayonet is that it has flutes cut into the blade. It's a cruciform bayonet. Now this made it expensive to produce, as well as the fact that it was one solid forging, which means that the socket, the blade, were all made together in one piece, and then it was further milled out from that. They made about 75,000 of these before production ended. Only one company produced them. And just by looking at it, you can tell it is a very high quality bayonet. It was produced early in the war, has a very high quality bluing job, and the milling is excellent. There are no tool marks left on it or anything. It's a very high quality, good bayonet. Now after production ended on the number four Mark I, production began on the number four Mark II. Now the only difference between these two designs was that the Mark II eliminated the milled cuts in the blade. This took away an extra step that didn't really actually affect the effectiveness of the blade in the field and made it easier to produce overall. Three separate companies produced these, Singer Manufacturing Company, Small Arms Limited, and Savage Stevens Company. Now this was the most common of all these, uh, of all the different designs of the number four. They made about 3.3 million of them and production continued on this bayonet until they started producing the number four Mark II Star. The second to last version of the number four produced was the number four Mark II Star. Now, the main difference between this and the previous versions was that this bayonet was actually created from two separate forgings. There was a forging for the blade and there was a forging for the socket. Now what this meant is that you could have subcontractors that produced, say one produced just blades and the other produced just sockets. And this meant that it was easier and faster to produce these bayonets and there was less chance of production interruption due to enemy air raids. Now, when you look at one of these bayonets, you can easily tell that this is a number four Mark II star because of the step design on the blade where the two pieces were joined together. And also just looking at the quality overall, for example, on the, so on the uh, socket, you can see a lot of milling marks from where they just kind of threw out some of the finer, finer finishing on these bayonets because it just wasn't as much of a concern at this point in the war. Now I mentioned that as time went on, these bayonets progressively got more crude. Nothing really compares to the number four Mark III. Now this was the final version of this bayonet produced in a time where they just needed as many bayonets as possible. And it's kind of a mess. I mean, if you look at it, the entire socket is just one big welded mass of sheet metal. These were produced from seven separate stampings, which are then welded together to make up the socket of the bayonet. And it's not pretty, but it got the job done and it works. So let's take a look at some of the bayonets in my collection, some of my number four bayonets, and I'll show you some of the things I was explaining in a bit of uh, greater detail. Now here are my number four bayonets. In the front, we have a number four Mark II star and then a number four Mark II. Now I'll explain some of the things I was talking about in the previous portion of the video right now. So let's look at the number four uh, Mark II first. So here's this bayonet take it out of the scabbard and you can see that there is no step here it is one solid piece from the socket to the blade you can see that the milling is fairly high quality nice bluing the only marking on this one is some sort of serial number this could have been added after the war or during I've inquired about that and there's 
there's all sorts of possibilities as to where this came from because they did refit these bayonets, uh, rework them after the war, so there's really no telling. Here is the number four Mark II star. You can see the step in the blade and then the crude milling marks all over this bayonet. And here are the markings. You can see the manufacturer. Up on the very top, you can see the star that would have said number four Mark II star and then what's left of a broad arrow British property mark. This bayonet has some stains from rust as these did stay in storage for a number of years and the, the condition of the blade is actually pretty good apart from those rust stains. Now let's take a look at the scabbards themselves. Now real quick before we take a look at the scabbards, let's look at these two bayonets side by side. Now here we have the two scabbards that would have held these bayonets onto the soldier's belt. Now let's look at this one first. So you can see it is blued steel with a blued steel mouthpiece. And I don't know if you can see those markings very well, but at the top it says number four mark one. I'll put up a picture if that doesn't come through on the camera. And uh, this one, there's actually a good chance this scabbard was made in the uh, United States. They made two million of these in the United States, and because this does not have any British property marks on it or manufacturer's information, that gives it a pretty good chance of having been made here. Now, this other one, you can see, is also blued steel. It actually looks like it was coated with some sort of black paint at some point down the side of it, and it has what is called a mazak throat on it there. Oh, there you go. Now you can see those markings as well. You can see the broad arrow at the bottom. Number four mark one on the top left. The number four seems to be missing. You can see the mark one. And then to the right of that, the manufacturer's information. Thanks for watching. I'd also like to thank the owner of worldbayonets.com. He kindly gave me permission to use images from his website, and that is where I did most of the research for this video. Thank you.